we have a federalist system. And part of our constitutional system is an ability for the states to amend the Constitution directly, bypassing Congress completely. It's right there in Article 5. It reads in part on the application of the legislatures of two-thirds of the several states shall call a convention for proposing amendments which shall be valid to all intents and purposes as part of this Constitution when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states. However, this portion of Article 5 has never been triggered. And in Kansas, there is strong, strong support for this unprecedented effort to fix a broken Washington, D.C. through Article 5. Joining me now from Marion, Kansas, Convention of the State's Regional Director, David Schneider. Uh, David, uh, in Kansas, you all have some good news and you have some bad news. Let's start with the good news. Uh, there is, as of last month, um, a majority, a, a, a strong sense of support for an Article 5 Convention of the States and your legislature passing a resolution to our officially participate, correct? That is very correct. We've got uh, about two-thirds of Kansans that are in support of Convention of the States. And if you look just at Republicans, it's about three-quarters of all Republicans compared to about 15% against. Yet, unfortunately, we're unable to pass it all the way through our legislature. So that's the bad news. That, that is the bad news. Yeah. So uh, this is regarding a, uh, a Senate bill, uh, SCR 1611, uh, and there was a vote on it. What was it, last week? Yeah, that's correct. Last, last week on Thursday, we had a, actually a majority of 22 senators that voted in favor as opposed to 16. And that was a majority. Actually, 21 is a, is a clear majority. But unfortunately, in the state of Kansas, there, in our Kansas Constitution, there's a provision that was put in there in 1974 it related to Article 5. And it states that we have to have a two-thirds majority on any of our votes related to anything on Article 5. So it's, it's just another safeguard that was put into the state of Kansas for this very, this very measure. And so uh, what were the reasons given uh, by some of these members of the Senate that did not support an Article 5. Is, is there a clear one at all? Is it the fear of the unknown? Is it they simply think Washington, D.C. is just fine, doesn't need fixing? What? Well, I tell you, all the Democrats voted against this. And we heard almost exactly the same things coming from the Republicans that voted against as well. And it was fear-based. Um, now, you can look at the D Democrats' arguments and say that they were disingenuous with their fears. But it was exactly the same arguments that were used by these so-called conservative Republicans. And I, I say that very loosely uh, because in my mind, there may be one on that list is actually a conservative. All right. So you mentioned seven Republicans that voted against this. And uh, it seems rather counterintuitive if you call yourself a Republican. Uh, I want to go through them, David, uh, starting with Richard Hildebrand. Uh, we got his nice lovely picture up there his uh, phone number and his uh, email now I, we're gonna put all seven up and leave it long enough for people to write down the phone numbers and the emails and uh, Americans it doesn't have to be uh, necessarily residents of of Kansas it can be re uh, Americans of all 50 states can weigh in on this I think but certainly people in Kansas uh, probably mean more to these people uh, next one is John Scooball um, again his Lovely picture and his phone number and his uh, email. And, and David, if you know about any of these people, just jump in and, and let me know uh, what they're saying. We contacted their offices, by the way, and I'll let you know um, how they treated us. Next is Dennis Pyle, uh, his contact information. We contacted these folks, and most of them didn't want to give us the time of day. They didn't even uh, bother answering the question, you know, why did you vote no? Uh, and then we've got four ladies, uh, Carolyn McGinn, um, her contact uh, information, um, again, gave us lip service. The office did anyway, not available. Uh, Vicki Schmidt is the next senator who voted no, Republican in Kansas. There's the contact information. Uh, Dinah Sykes is another yeah. senator voting no, uh, contact information. And the final one is Mary Jo Taylor phone number, uh, and email. What do you know about any of these people? Did they give you any specifics at all, David? 
Well, a lot of these senators are fairly new into the legislature. They came in uh, with what they called so-called the, uh, the wave of uh, 2016. And uh, they came in basically um, as trying to, as more of a moderates, as you could say. So and we tried to spend a lot of time with these folks, and some of them didn't give us the time of day in our in the grassroots. We had their constituents calling them. We had unprecedented uh, phone calls that were coming in from their own constituents. Emails that I got to I was copied on. We're talking in the hundreds from their constituent, and some of them said they just didn't hear enough from their constituents, which again seemed to be very disingenuous. Um, what's it going to take to get these people off? I mean, obviously, seven Republicans, that's the difference between this thing passing or not. So, so what, what happens now? What, what's your next plan in Kansas? Well, in Kansas, we've got to regroup. Uh, obviously, we have an election this summer. We have a primary. Um, none of these senators, unfortunately, are up for election. They're up for another two years. But it's critical in the state of Kansas that we look at our House of Representatives because a lot of these same type of individuals that reside in the House and we failed in the House two years ago with a very tight margin. We had 77 in favor, which we needed 84 to get to that two thirds. So we've got to make a strong push in this next primary to ensure that all of our elected officials are in support of convention state. All right, and, and we'll put that contact information for the folks in, in Kansas and, and maybe give them a change of heart uh, by a deluge of uh, uh, folks watching this program and let them know, hey, we need to fix Washington, D.C. and get on board the train, please. Uh, uh, so I can't leave on a down note. Uh, you represent multiple states, uh, not just Kansas. Is, is there a bright spot among your grouping that's going to maybe possibly uh, go to a, a convention and, and proffer some sort of legislation that will have them participate? I'm so very hopeful that the state of Iowa is going to come on board very, very soon. Uh, we're looking very positive there. We're looking for the final vote to happen in the next couple of weeks. All right. Um, so be looking for state no number 13 to join on, and hopefully that's Iowa very soon. It's a momentum thing, you know. There was great momentum uh, in spring of last year in 2017, kind of hit a wall, and Convention of States needs to start pick up that momentum once again. David, thank you. Sign the petition and get your friends and family to do the same. With your full address, your state legislators will know that you really are their constituents in their district. Our success depends on you. So we're inviting you to be part of history. Let's invoke the constitutional solution that's as big as the problem.